Amen. We're grateful for everyone that's been down at the tent working and helping. Amen. I, I'm, uh, I'm really happy to see Brother Derek at church tonight. I left him down there yesterday with Sister Michelle and Sister Betty all by himself. Amen. And, and uh, Sister Kesley and Carly. And he's back at church, man. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Man, ain't none of them here, so we talk about them. Amen. If they wanted to hear what we were saying about them, they should be at church. Amen. Ha ha. I don't guess it's talking about them behind their back, Brother David, if I just do it right here at church. I thought they'd be here. No, I'm just teasing. Amen. I'm going to review just a little bit. Then I'm going to finish what that we did, what we started on last Wednesday. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and, and I tell you, uh, I, I guess I kind of owe you an apology. Because uh, ever since Sunday night, does anybody remember what I preached Sunday night? Oh, Sister Kesley is here. <laughs> Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Sister Crystal with a K, do you care if I tell tonight what happened today in the middle of my message? Because it's going to fit. You're going to be. It's going to amaze you when it when I when I start getting in here. And I done had it from last Wednesday, but uh, uh, I owe you a little bit of an apology because I did, did. Anybody say they remember what I preached Sunday night? Oh man, alive. <laughs> I'm quitting. I've, I've been re-preaching that ever since then, Brother Pete, in my mind. And I've read it again, and I've went back and looked over it and thought about it. And and quite frankly, it it is kind of melted into what I'm going to preach tonight. Um, I, I usually... Uh, I usually use all King James Version of the Bible. It's, uh, it, it's just worked for a long time, Brother David. It's, it's been for over 400 years, and it's, uh, it's, I love it. I, I know some of the language is out of date a little bit, Sister Marie, but I love it. I love it. The, the 23rd Psalm doesn't sound right anywhere else. You know, it, it just doesn't. But I, uh, I go to different versions of the Bible and I, I, I read them and then go back to the King James Version, Brother Pete, and sometimes it sheds light on maybe a, a few words or uh, uh, different things. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hopefully help you tonight. Here's the goal. It's a call to spiritual growth, okay? That's where we were last Wednesday. But I feel like that where I want to lead you to tonight, by the help of the Lord, is to the place... And I've, I've mentioned this before, but I hope to be able to lead you tonight through a renewed hunger for the Word that you can get yourself fixed by the Word of God before you ever come to the house of God. How much could we gain when we come to the house of God, Brother David, if we didn't have to back up and pick up all the stuff that the Lord's been working on us all the time. Because you know the Lord does not just, when we leave on Wednesday night tonight, He doesn't just pitch a tent down here and crawl in it and sleep till Sunday morning. But He's working on us all the time. And like I, I'm going to just use this illustration. Maybe you're here tonight, maybe you're not. Maybe it's safe tonight, maybe it's not. But Sister Casey and I were talking right before church. And, uh, you know, last Sunday, last, last Wednesday, I had 33 kids in children's church. And that's in the middle of the summer with things being down a little bit. I don't know that they'll have that many tonight. But uh, um, they, they had 30 some odd kids. And, and uh, there's, there is a need, not for babysitters, not for 
just monitors, but there's a need for about four more folks to get the calling on their life to be involved in children's ministry. So, Brother Larry, I don't mean you necessarily, but you just had me looking at me right then. And uh, so, what I said to Sister Casey was, Sister Maria, is there's, if there's a need, the Lord's aware of it. And He's already put the plan in place to bring it to pass. So there are some fun. If we're short some helpers, some workers that have a calling on them. Are you following me? Now there's a lot of folks that are willing to help do anything just because they say, hey, I'll be there. But, Brother Johnny, there's a difference when God puts a burden or puts a calling on you for something. And it... If there's a need, boy, I could preach a while tonight. Man, I wasn't even feeling all that good before church. Y'all probably better be glad about that. Because it might really get squirrely in here. The Lord is already working to fill that need. But what happens when you don't want to? Now, for some reason, this makes it, un makes it uncomfortable. You know, we've even got folks... That say, I would really like to help, but I don't want to miss out on Bible study. Well, I really do appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, baby. You always count on... The only thing is that I don't know if she's laughing with me or at me. But, so, the Lord has a plan. The Lord has some desires. The, think, think about it like this, Sister Maria. If I get so frustrated that I could pull out what little hair I got left, what's the He doing? Because there are so much stuff. I got, con I got reprimanded by the Holy Ghost on the way to church tonight. I'm not going to tell you what about it. Ain't none of your business. But I was thinking something, and the Lord said, shut your mouth, or your, your mind up. Because when we tend to veer away from the spiritual, there ain't but one way to go, and that's carnal. And when we get under the carnal influence, we're going to mess up. Now you may be able for a little bit just out of habit or just out of ritual to stay walking in the same way for a period of time, but you are going to get off track. Now the Lord's wanting to do some great things in our church. And everything I'm reading and everything I'm studying and everything I feel from the Holy Ghost is the people are here. The people are already here. To do what the Lord wants to do. Come on now, I know fellas that have tried to pay a piano player to come in and play for their services. We got so much talent and so much ability here, but we are going to have to mature. And I hope you understand I'm speaking to everybody under the sound of my voice. We are going to have to mature and pursue God with the same attitude that Isaiah had when he said, Here am I, send me. So, 1 Peter chapter 1, 22-25, this is just a review. He, he reminds them, you've purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit under unfeigned love of the brethren. The easiest way, the most elementary way that the Holy Ghost manifests itself in us is we automatically start loving people more. Come on now. What in the world happens? Watch them when they come down here and get the Holy Ghost. Hopefully Sunday morning we're going to have like 13. But watch them when they come down here and get the Holy Ghost. What do you want to do when the first thing when you get up from getting the Holy Ghost? Start hugging folks. You got to go around and start hugging folks. That is the, the most elementary way that the Holy Ghost manifests itself in us uh, is unto unfeigned love of the brethren. And you don't go, you don't, I, I don't, I've watched people get up, they don't even really know them, they start hugging on them. And I think well, they must know one another. After church, guess what? 
guy. Y'all don't know each other. We just love one another. That's what the Spirit does. Okay, so there's a new, uh, 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 an explosion that takes place when you are converted, when you feel the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a fresh start. It's a purified soul, a purified mind. And we've got a new direction to go. And it occurs when the truth is obeyed through the Spirit. Now, you cannot achieve maturity in the Spirit a different way than you got started in the Spirit. You get started in the Spirit by obedience, and you are going to become mature in the Spirit also by obedience. Meaning, if the Lord's knocking on your heart's door, you need to open it and let Him in. See that, it says. The next step, fulfilling the purpose of discipleship, is a, for the reason of identification as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The purpose of discipleship is that everyone knows that you're a disciple of the Lord. You say, well, what do you know about that? I do know about that. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay? By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. If you have love one to another, the way we treat one another and the way we are around one another should represent Jesus Christ. It is our light shining. Being born again of incorruptible seed, by the Word of God, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 23. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is a flower of grass. Meaning, as beautiful as you might be today, it could be gone tomorrow. Okay? Your mind can be sharp as a tack today, and be completely gone tomorrow. All right, our our glory, that that things that that we use as our as our badge of of uh, of self elevation is all temporary. You're going to get some wrinkles. Did you hear me? You're going to get some wrinkles, and and you're gonna. At some point, you are going to have to start waking up an extra time or two to go to the bathroom. Because you're getting old. If you're lucky. Amen, brother. Sister Nady says, shh. No, I'm just, just teasing. Okay? Our, our glory fades. That's why we have got to get a relationship with this. We have got to because Brother Billy, it doesn't fade. In this passage, in between the covers of this black, black on black book, is everything you need to get an answer for every question in your life. And it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. You can go in the book, and it's super exciting. Take Matthew chapter number 4, for instance. You can go in the book. Now, I'm going to use this as an illustration, but I'm, I'm all over the place a little bit, but you have to forgive me. I had heard Jesus being tempted in the wilderness all of my life. I remember being in Sister Barker's class. And we used to have some of them, we might still have some of them around here, but, but Brother David, they were these little people, and you stuck them on felt. Y'all remember that? And it was visuals. We've come a long way, baby. Okay? But I remember learning in Sunday school about make these stones into bread, Throw yourself down off the temple. Worship the devil. I remember hearing all that. And then Jesus says, every time it is written, it is written, it is written. But until I begin to preach the gospel, in or around at this particular time, probably about 1996 or 97, I never, Brother David, never had went and looked up in the Bible the Scriptures Jesus said. I just read it like it was there and took it for granted. But then I begin 
Sister Maria, when I went back and read it, I got like, oh my goodness. The same words can come out of my mouth that came out of Jesus' mouth. The same words. And Brother Billy, they're still as effective. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then we had always been taught that the devil said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall keep you, lest at any time you should dash your foot against the stone. So I just read it until I went to the Bible and I read and understood that the devil messed that scripture up. So my point is, is there is a treasure in here. There is a treasure in here. Let me move along. I'm already about done, I guess. No, we just start at seven now, don't we? Not six. I saw seven forty one and I thought, man, that like an hour and something went by fast. <laughs> Y'all just have to forgive me. Everything that makes you who you are is going to fade. The grass withereth and the flower falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And then he says, and I went into it all, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So the new birth is the beginning. And then the Bible starts telling us all this stuff you got to get rid of when you're born again. When you're born again, when you start over, you don't want the same junk coming out of your mouth as did before. Oh, you can't hold on to it. All malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies. Anybody remember the difference between envy and jealousy? Anybody remember? What is it, Brother Larry? Envy is when you don't even want them to have something to do. And jealous, I wish I had it. Envy, I just don't want them to be blessed. So this first section that we just read deals with the need for radical change in our relationships with others. There's no wiggle room. There's no justification. The Lord doesn't say lay aside all malice and all hypocrisies and all guile and all envies and all evil speakings unless they give you the finger when you cut them off in traffic. Huh? You feeling me? Unless... They pulled your hair way back in the fifth grade. Okay, we like to. I have heard it before. And I'm just going to give you forewarning. I am praying for courage and wisdom. I need both of those things. That when I hear you say it, I want to call you on it. Brother David, there have been people say, I know you've been preaching about that. But this is why I didn't do it. Come on, you, you've seen it before. I know I really ought not be doing that because I heard you preach against it, but you just don't know how mad they made me. Let me tell you something. This was revealed to me way back a few months ago, back in April. There are some times... That the Lord allows you to go through the same mess that you went through before so you can get it right. You can get a second chance because there was a situation several weeks ago. There was a situation and it was kind of goofy. It wasn't even that big of a deal. But when I began to pray about it, Brother David, the Lord said, it still ain't right. But I let them go through it so they can get it right. So, you might be the Lord. Man, sometimes it's just amazing what comes to me while I'm preaching. The Lord may let you get done wrong. 
So you can react better to it this time than you did the last time. Brother Billy, the Bible says, as long as you're in the world, there's going to be jacked up people that mess with you. I, I, I paraphrased a little bit, but it's there. And there are times that the Lord is going to let the same thing happen, the same person look ugly at you, talk ugly at you, make an ugly face at you, stick their tongue out at you, whatever in the world it is that they do to make you mad. They might get the last cabbage patch, baby, on Black Friday like they did the first five years in a row. But the Lord will let that happen until you get it right. Is this on? I mean, really, sometimes I don't think it's on. Because, Brother David, listen to me. I'm just telling you, the Holy Ghost is amazing, Sister Maria. It is amazing. Because when I had that, I knelt down to pray. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. I prayed about a certain situation. This is the truth. That like old Wendy said, Brother Pete, with my hand up. If another situation did not rear its head up the same evening that had the same answer. Two totally, completely unrelated things. But it was the same junk. And it had the same answer. Basically, I'm giving you another chance to get it right this time. But the response was, not again! They still did you wrong. Nobody's saying they did you right. But Brother David, I oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I don't have to be taught to react appropriately when people do me right. But I've got to be taught to act appropriately when people do me wrong. He said it. Even the Pharisees love those that love them back. But it takes somebody with the Holy Ghost to learn. So, what's the silver lining behind this cloud? If you've been messing up over and over and over with the same thing, the next time it happens... Come on, big boy. I'm ready for you this time. Because you heard on Wednesday night when half the folks wasn't here. You knew you were here on purpose because God needed to tell you I ain't messing it up again. I'm going to get it right this time. And then the next time I'm done wrong, I'm going to get it right. Because when you act a fool, it don't matter if you've been done right or wrong. You act a fool, you open yourself up to the devil. And you run. You run your witness. Here lately there was something going on. I may not even stay on my notes. Is this okay? Here lately there was something going on in my life. And uh, not not a sin, you know. I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, looking at bad stuff on the internet or none of that. Not, it wasn't a sin. It's just, uh, brother Billy. Sometimes you start weighing something out in your mind. You know, put it on a scale and wonder about this, and then it goes, and the other side comes up, and then you put that on there. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Does anybody remember the old scales Grandma used to have? And you start weighing stuff out in your mind, and you know, Sister Maria. I'm praying about it. But I have an uncontrollable urge to start talking to people about it until I found somebody that would tell me you're all right. And every time I would start to do it, Sister Maria, have I said your name like 50 times tonight? Let me, let me call out somebody else. <laughs> Like every time I started to think about it, I said, well, I'll talk to this one about it. And I'll talk to this one. The Holy Ghost said, why? Why? I'm going to tell you the right thing. And if they don't agree with you, you ain't going to listen to them anyway. We're 
going to go around till we find somebody that says you were perfectly justified to curse them out. <laughs> Now, I know I stretched it just a little bit, but not much based upon your responses. You were perfectly justified. Because that's the way it works. You find somebody else that's just as carnally minded as you are, or somebody that's too chicken to tell you the truth. The things that the Lord has for us, the ministries that the Lord has, the giftings and the callings that the Lord has for us, are immeasurable, incomparable. You're not going to find a bargain at the store that can compare to walking in the fulfillment of what God has for you. So stop being sissies and wimps and flunking every test that comes your way. I'm not being facetious right now. I'm being for real. Because me and the Lord, it started with Him, but me and the Lord got some big plans for all of you. I love it when I start looking around and half the people go... Mm. <laughs> it's in the Word. What you want from God's in the Word. The question you're looking for is in the Word. The answer is in the Word right there. You kneel to pray, and I'm going to preach pretty soon. I remember Brother Billy really bragged on me, told me that was the best I ever done when I talked about it. And then Brother Richard didn't do it out front of everybody. You need to work on that, brother. If you're going to brag on it, brother, you got to do it out in front of folks. But Brother Richard came to me privately and said, you know, that was just amazing, which it wasn't even all my own material. But when I talked about, y'all remember when I preached about the rhema word and the logos word? You ever get a rhema word? Does anybody like to tell what a rhema word is? It's a personal word, Brother David, but it comes out of the Bible. It's a personal word. A Logos word is a general word. It's, it's, it's the, this is the Logos. But when the Lord speaks into your life, when you're asking a question, y'all remember I preached about it. I thought I was dying with a heart attack. Y'all remember that? And the Lord gave me a word that told me you ain't dying of a heart attack, so stop being a baby. But the only thing is, is I was so excited, Courtney, that I got a word from the Lord. And then I got another word. Remember, I was preaching in church. Did I, did I tell this one? If I didn't, I'm going to tell it right now. I, I was preaching. And I found myself focusing my entire messages on like three people who looked at me like they hated me every service. And so I'm thinking, I'm going to make you love me. You're going to like me before this is done. And I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching. I ain't getting nowhere. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm just, I'm getting, the devil's keeping me infatuated with a sour beer face. Y'all people with the Holy Ghost don't know nothing about that. Except Sister Kim. She's laughing with the quickness. And then Sister Leanne, the word of the Lord spoke to me, said, go to Jeremiah chapter number one. And the Lord told Jeremiah, he said, listen, because the Lord called him and Jeremiah said, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Lord, give me five on that one. That's a good idea. But I can't do it because I'm too young. It's in the book. You can read it yourself. I'm just a child. I'm too young. And the Lord said, you listen to me, boy. I knew you before you was in your mama. And while you was in your mama, I sanctified you. And then the next part says, Do not be afraid of their faces. Brother Billy, I nearly had to come apart. I mean, it was like, you know, you know that you're in the Holy Ghost when you run the aisles all by yourself. But I'm telling you, what I'm preaching to you tonight, and, and so don't get distracted and stuff, because I probably won't going to keep you much longer. Children's church people are going to love me tonight. What I'm telling you is, is for every question you have, for every battle you're going through, there's an answer.